I want to make a version of my pick power meter which consumes less power so I'm going to use uh, one of these LCD displays uh, and I'm going to drive it using 74HC595 shift registers. So there's three shift registers here, one of them is behind the display. I've got an 8-pin pick microcontroller which I'm using to dis to drive this display. I just get to get this up and running. The actual uh, LCD displays I'm going to use in the pick power meter will be four-digit ones rather than three-digit ones. Uh, but this is just an experiment to, to see if I can get it uh, actually running. And on this on the current meter here, you can see it's taking about three quarters of a milliamp, uh, so less than a milliamp to actually drive this circuit. Uh, and as I'm the actual pick power meter just really uses an additional component, which is um, a quad op amp, which doesn't take uh, much current at all. It's, it should still be less than a milliamp to actually make a version of my pick power meter. So in this video, I'll take a look at the circuit which I've got here, uh, look at the circuit diagram and describe how the circuit diagram is actually constructed. Uh, and then I'll go over the, the data sheet for the LCD display and describe the parameters which I'm using off the, the data sheet and how we actually the LCD display is driven from the shift registers. So this is one of my pick power meters over here with an OLED display uh, and as you can see on the meter it's taken about 5.2 milliamps uh, and so the, uh, the LCD displays which I'm going to use which are these larger um, four digit ones uh, so I'm going to be getting just a, just less than a milliamp use out of those. So it's it's not you might consider it's not actually that much less power, uh, but it is actually five times power. So if a battery on this meter lasted an hour, then the battery on my lower power one would last six hours. So it does make a big difference. Um, and I, I want to use the lower power ones on very small solar panels. So, so this is the full circuit of my test circuit. So I've got a three digit LCD display which sits over a couple of the chips, which is quite handy with these displays because it keeps the circuit smaller. And then I've got three, uh, for the three digits, I've got three S74HC595 uh, shift registers, which are 8-bit shift registers. And I've got my small pick microcontroller in the middle there. Uh, and as comparison, the actual four-digit displays are, are a bit, bit bigger than the three-digit displays. And of course, I need an extra shift register to actually uh, power them. Uh, so I'll have four four shift registers and a, an eight pin uh, pick microcontroller in my final project. So this is a circuit for my test circuit for the LCD display. Uh, I've got a pick microcontroller over here, uh, and I'm using three of the GPIO pins here to actually control the shift registers to to actually display um, my the digits on the LCD display. Uh, the first one goes to the serial data, so that's how I transfer the data. Uh, and then there's a serial clock here, which uh, clocks in the data. Uh, and this clock down here is to clock the data which has been clocked in to the output pins. So it holds the, uh, the data which has been clocked in in the buffer. And then just using this pin, you can actually black the output um, that's waiting to go out into the output pins and update the display. And the actual shift registers, they're just uh, wired in a series. So I've got one here, one here, and one here to make the three, and I'll need one more for a four digit display. Uh, and you connect the NOC QH from one into the serial data to the next, uh, and again from here into the serial data there. And then this one doesn't go anywhere, the knock UH output on that one. So they just uh, daisy chain and then you clock the data uh, through um, this one and then it clocks out into here. So the data you clock out first has to go, it goes into this final um, shift register uh, and then the data is second and the, and the last data you clock out goes into the first one. So it kind of reverse kind of order when you think about it in programming terms. So in my pick power meter, um, I use one switch uh, on the GP on the pin, which is only can only be used as an input pin anyway. And then this leaves me the two analog to digital um, channels for doing my reading of current and voltage. Uh, I don't have any uh, analog to digital, digital channels on this one that I'm using. This pick microcontroller I'm using as a test uh, pick microcontroller, but I'm just uh, I've just picked the most basic pick microcontroller I can just uh, just for this testing. So this is the data sheet for the three-digit LCD display. And there's only a couple of uh, parameters that need to be taken note of. And one is the 
supply voltage in this case it's for the three digit display it's five volt AC uh, but if I switch to the data sheet for the four digit LCD display uh, the other parameter is the operating frequency now this isn't mentioned on the three digit display data sheet but on here it says 30 to 300 Hertz uh, I'm driving the test one at four, about 40 Hertz so when it says 5 volts AC what it means is uh, you need to drive the pin in with a signal where so that's supposed to be square um, where 0 volts is in the middle here uh, and it goes between minus 5 here at the bottom uh, to plus 5 but my uh, chips are only 5 volt chips so uh, so the shift registers they're supplied with um, 0 volts and 5 volts so how to get um, from these shift registers plus 5 to minus 5 um, so this pin 1 is here is 0 volts uh, and all the other pins uh, drive the different segments of the display which are described in this table down down here and it gives you a reference as to what the segment names are over here so if I look at um, just consider driving this pin here which gives me this segment which I've filled in a, a, a red color anyway so if I hold all of these other pins at zero volts the difference between the common pin which is at zero volts currently and all of the other pins which are zero volts uh, is, is a zero volts so they won't be driving those pins and if I hold the segment that I want here at five volts that switches it on so I got um, zero volts to, f to five volts which gives me uh, this segment um, filled in uh, so that gives me the plus five but how do I get to minus five well if I then for all of these other digits and the common move those to plus five volts so this is now at five volts here and as all these other ones are at five volts they're still off because the difference between five volts and five volts is zero volts and if I move this segment which I want to light up to zero volts uh, then the difference between uh, the segment and the common is, is now minus five volts um, so you only so you do that with whatever segments you want to uh, actually light up so I've only given one example there but if you have the common at a particular voltage and whatever segments you want to light up at the opposite voltage and then when you're driving it all you do is flip uh, invert the bits uh, all of the bits on the display so once you've lit up the segments you want you just keep inverting the bits on the display um, and it will generate the plus and minus AC signal that you require to actually drive the LCD display I'll show you that on the, an actual oscilloscope so if I probe between a ground pin on the shift register and one of the pins on the actual LCD display you see that it goes between on the oscilloscope uh, I'm getting a signal between 0 volts and 5 volts uh, but if I now move my ground to the common pin on the LCD display the actual signal goes between plus and minus 5 volts now uh, so by just uh, oscillating between 0 volts and 5 volts on the common pin and the opposite on whichever pin you want to actually drive on the LCD display you get a signal which is plus and minus 5 volts